Hey everybody, welcome back. As you can see from the picture you just saw just before I started talking here, I had four, actually I had two pork shoulders and I had two pork picnics that I found in the freezer. I was out looking through the freezer, seeing what all kinds of meat I needed to get rid of, can, cook, before the move. And I found a pork loin and four other pork shoulder picnics. And I can't keep them frozen, I gotta can them. So this is what it looks like when you cut up in about one inch pieces all the pork and the bones off of the two um, pork picnics. There's a lot of meat on them and I was getting a lot here. So I decided I just took those two bones with the meat on them and I put them in my Instapot and I'll show you that in a, a separate video, but I'm just cooking those off. Why waste all that meat? And I was running out of room anyway, so that's gonna be for my pulled pork for this week. So what I have here is 12 quart, and I use wide mouth this time. I think it'd be easier to get them out when I do the cooking. I'm doing this all raw pack. So my water in here is cold, my meat is cold. Well, room temperature and room temperature water. And my jars are have been sanitized and now they're coming to room temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a teaspoon of salt, and this is totally optional, you don't have to. And this is un-iodized salt. You don't use iodized salt for canning. So I'm just gonna put a teaspoon in each one of these in the bottom. And then we'll be ready to start filling with the meat. I don't season my pork when I can it because depending on what I'm gonna use it in, I'm gonna use those seasonings. So I just, I just do it raw with just salt and you don't have to do it. The salt's not preserving it. The pressure and the temperature is what's preserving it. So I'm going to start putting all the pork in here. Keep one hand clean and try to keep one hand clean. And I'm doing these in quarts this time instead of pints because I wanted to be able, when I open it up, I can have like two, maybe three meals, but probably two meals that I can do. And I'm gonna leave an inch of head space here. Yeah, let's see, get another one in there. And now, Doing in quarts, we're going to do it for 90 minutes. We're going to pressurize it for 90 minutes. Um, if it was pints, we'd do 75 minutes. And you can, it'd be the exact same pressures if this was cooked. You guys have seen one of my videos I did pulled pork that was already cooked and I just canned it. You still do it 75 minutes and 90 minutes. So you're not going to change that at all. You're not, when I do raw packing, I don't put any juices in any, any liquid, any stock. So you can if you want, I don't. This makes its own. We're just gonna pack it in and let it, all the juices and the fat that's in this pork cook out. And this will be nice when I come home from work and I just don't feel like cooking a lot. I can pull one of these off the shelf, open it up. I can put it in a casserole. I can put it in, I can just put it in a pan with its broth with some barbecue sauce or whatever seasoning I want, make pulled pork sandwiches. You already have cooked meat ready to go. And that's the hardest part of dinner is getting the proteins cooked in time. So let me get all these in. As soon as I get these packed, I'll be right back. I got that pork filled the 12 pint or 12 quarts and I just had a few pieces left over. I threw them in the instant pot um, with those bones and I'm going to cook it up. So I really didn't waste anything. So we've got these all packed. We got them to about an inch of head space. And I'm just going to make sure everybody's down and happy in there. Okay. Now, I'm going to clean the lids with vinegar. I always clean my lids, especially when you're using meat. It's got fat. Even if you're not using doing meat, any little dirt, any little speck on there could cause it not to seal. So, I'm grab a paper towel. Now, I'm just going to go around and wipe down all the rims. Get them nice and 
nice and clean. Now I've got my lids over here, brand new lids. I didn't, I usually soak them in hot water. I didn't this time. You don't have to anymore. I just always have. So today's gonna to be a change for me. We'll see how they turn out. But I am happy I'm gonna have 12 quarts of ready food going. Now I pour in the extra vinegar into my pot because any of the impurities and things in the water can help make your jars look a little white. So I'm going to now put the lids on, which have been cleaned also. You don't have to worry about sanitizing as much because this pressure is going to sanitize it. It's going to be in there for 90 minutes. Anything here is going to be sanitized. But I did wash them since they were brand new. I'm just going to put them all on here. And last but not least, all of our rings. We're not going to tighten them real tight, just finger tight. I gotta show you in the other videos. Oh, lid down. Get all these on. Okay, so I've got the salt in, which is optional. I got the meat in about an inch of head space. Cleaned jars, lids, and rings. Putting them on finger tight. And as I set them in the canner, I'm going to tighten them just a tad bit more. Sorry, right now they're not as tight as they should be. Now we're not gonna get all 12 of these in here, so I'm gonna be doing two different batches. Everybody's tight. Okay, now we're going to put them in. Remember, this is just room temperature water. I have, there's a line inside my Presto canner that you fill the water up to. Every canner is different. Follow your manufacturer's directions on your canner. It's real specific on each canner, so make sure you follow that. So I've got my water in already, and I do have the piece on the bottom that they're all sitting on. And for those of you who can, no, we're not going to get all these in there. So I've got, what do we got here? Two, four, six, seven can, seven in here. And if these were pints, I could put my divider on there and put a second row, but since they're quartz, we're not going to be able to. So everything's nice and cool. I'll do these five separately. Let me get my lid. Make sure on your lid that your steam valve is loose, that you can see through the port where all the steam comes out. And also make sure that your rubber seal is loose, nice and limber, it's not dried out. Wash it after each use. Now on mine, I have an arrow here and an arrow here where I line up. I'm just gonna seal that. Now I'm gonna turn it on and I, I'm not gonna put it on high. I don't want it to go real fast because I don't want a lot of siphoning. Sometimes when it changes pressure real fast, or temperature real fast, you can get some siphoning. So I'm just gonna put it on probably about seven. I'm going to bring it up to a uh, steam section. This little valve will pop up and then you'll have steam coming out here. Once the steam starts coming out of this valve, you're gonna time it for 10 minutes. You want 10 minutes of a steady stream of steam, or as I said, Jeannie popping out of her bottle for 10 minutes. Once that 10 minutes hits, then you'll put on your weight and then you're going to bring it up to the pressure. We're going to, since I'm using a dial gauge, mine's going to be at 11 pounds of pressure. I'm at sea level, like six feet above sea level, so that's where mine is. Always check and make sure that your altitude um, adjusted appropriately. Always look in at the different canning books. The um, United States Home Canning, um, I'll put a link down below. Always do your homework. Don't follow what I say. I might have just made a mistake or the other people on YouTube, they can make mistakes too. Always do your homework. This is your family. You wanna make sure that your food is safe for them, but follow those guidelines. I always put a link down below for you. So 75 minutes for uh, meat and pints, 90 minutes for quarts, 
and it's going to be at 11 pounds pressure for mine. So once it gets up to steaming, I will bring you back and show you where we're at. So the first seven were done. I took it off the heat and after the pressure dropped, this valve did drop down right now. It's just sitting up because I got the lid sitting this way. But I always take the lid and just crack it for a little bit, try to get the, the temperature to equalize a little bit from inside and outside. That cuts down on siphoning and you don't want a lot of that. When you do take the lid off, point it away from you so if there's any extra steam, it doesn't get you. And this one only had five jars, so I have one jar in there that has just water in it. I wanted to, so they didn't bounce around. Now when you lift them up, and I'd, I'd never thought of this, but I was watching Linda over at Linda's Pantry, and she made a good point. There's water on top of some of these. Don't tip them to try to get the water off, because if the jar is not totally sealed yet completely, you can get a little bit of liquid in there, and maybe some of the meat or whatever you're canning, and you're not going to get a good seal. So just lift them straight up, make sure you lift below the band, and just take them straight out and set them down. Get all these out. This one I can hear bubbling away. As soon as I touched him. So I have 12 quarts, which could be 24 dinners of pork that was in my freezer. And I bought those back when they were like 99 cents a pound. Every time they had a sale for 99 cents a pound, I always went out and bought pork roast because I do them in the smoker or in the crock pot or in the oven. I just like shredded pork, so I always did that. And last but not least is the empty jar. I did put some water in it, dump that hot water out. That way it wouldn't bounce around or float in the water that was in there. So there you go. So this is back over here. I'll put I'll put the information down below again, and I'll put the link to the National Center for Home Canning and Preservation. Always follow their guidelines or any other books that you have that you know has set the standards. I try to be as precise as I can. I might make a mistake. I don't want you guys to do that. So <clears throat> I always tell you to look at look at that and do your homework. So here you go. Here's our um, canned pork and. We'll do some more canning videos soon. I'll talk to you again. Take care. Love you and God bless. Bye-bye.